Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me on my channel. So if you're new to my channel, my name is Carol Nyazika. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. If you find this video very useful, do like and leave a comment of what your thoughts are and if you have any suggestions or if you have any questions. Leave them all in the comment section down below. As always, I will leave all the information in the description box for you to have a look. Okay, so the first video in this series is going to be about retinoids. A lot of people know about vitamin A and retinol, but it gets a little bit confusing when you start talking about tretinoin and all these other different types of retinoids. So the umbrella term of vitamin A is retinoids, and retinoids has different types of variations depending on the potency. Know that everything that I'm going to be talking about is a retinoid, it's the, um, it's the family name, it's the group name. Similar to how you have different variations of um, sugar, you've got caster sugar, brown sugar, granulated sugar, all of that, but at the end of the day, they're all sugars. <laughs> In this video, I'm just going to break down the different types of retinoids, and hopefully this video will make it a lot more easier for you to understand different products when they are presented to you from different brands. So we're going to start off with just dissecting the different types of retinoids. A retinoid is probably the only ingredient that has been tested and proven to actually reverse the signs of aging and to also prevent them. So the weakest form of retinoid is your retinol palmitate. It is not easily absorbed by your skin and it also has little impact on the skin health. So it's not as effective as the other types of retinoids that are on the market. The next type of retinoid is your retinol, which is probably the one that everybody talks about because it is widely used, it is widely accessible, and it is used by a lot of brands. So retinol has different strengths. So you'll find that you know it varies between different brands. And the best way to do it, if you're still new, I would suggest that you start off with a lower percentage and then you increase gradually. The next potent from retinol is your retinol dehyde. This is a very great vitamin A, but it's very hard to find and it's very expensive. So you'll find that a lot of the products that have this ingredient in it will be a bit more pricier than your typical retinol. It's a very effective form and it causes very minimal irritation It's because you only need a very small percentage for it to be effective. Retinol dehyde acts quickly on the skin and it's clinically proven to work 11 times faster than retinol. So a, a step after this one is the gold standard of all retinoids, which is your retinoic acid. This is the most potent of all retinoids and because of its potency, you actually require a prescription to use it. So you can't find it in just any type of <laughs> product on the market. You actually have to get a prescription for it and then your dermatologist or your doctor will actually monitor how your skin is reacting and adjust the, the dosage for your skin. So retinoic acid is one of those things that you really need to be careful about and you need to consult a doctor. Those are the different types of retinoids and the variations just depend on the potency. So retinol palmitate is the least potent and then you move on to your retinol which is more accessible and very popular. From there you move to retinol dehyde. From there you then go to your retinoic acid. So retinoic acid there's also um, tretinoin that falls under that umbrella and there's also adapalene. So if you're looking for a retinoid to add into your skincare routine those are the different variations and what to look for. So I would suggest that you start off with a very low percentage and then you increase the percentage as your skin gets used to it. So next we're gonna talk about the pros and the cons of using a retinol. So the benefits of using a vitamin A in your skincare routine is that it is anti-aging, it reduces hyperpigmentation and it helps with acne prone skin so whether you have active acne or whether you are prone to acne vitamin a in your skincare routine is amazing another benefit is that it increases blood supply to your skin it also it also synthesizes collagen production another great thing is that it stimulates cell production so it makes your skin layer a lot 
thicker which just means that your skin will be a lot firmer a lot more plump which is what we want the cons about using vitamin a that you'll probably experience is that it increases sensitivity especially to the sun so when you use a vitamin a you have to use spf 50 there is like no compromise about that you should be using spf 50 every day anyway another con is you might experience some dryness as well as flakiness the reason why you get these reactions is because at its core, vitamin A is actually used to resurface your skin. And this is not going to happen overnight. So you need to give your product time to work and you need to get your skin to adjust to what you've just introduced. So take your time, be patient. And if you're using it at the right dosage and the right frequency, you should see the great results that I've mentioned as a pro. If you see that your skin is not really taking well to the product and it's at a low percentage and you still need it lower than what you have, then I will suggest that you buffer your vitamin A. And that just basically means you just add a layer of moisturizer before you apply your serum. So you can put your moisturizer on first and then put your retinol on and then apply another layer of moisturizer or oil on top to just seal everything in. So that will be a great way to buffer it. If you start off with a low percentage and you see that your skin is still not really liking that percentage and it's still a bit too strong for your skin, I would suggest that you buffer it in that way. Another thing to take note of is try and during this phase of adjusting is that try and avoid foaming cleansers in your routine. Go for a bit more milky cleansers, cleansers that don't strip your face because remember the vitamin A can cause a bit of dryness. You want to use products that are going to be high, that are going to be hydrating. Another tip that I can give you is that during the flaking period of your skin, um, try and avoid powders or found or very thick heavy foundation because what's that going, what that's going to do is it's just going to make your skin look a lot worse than it actually is so try using things that are a bit lighter or just skip the whole foundation process in its totality if you can especially during this lockdown when you're just in the house it's a great time to introduce a vitamin A in your routine because you're not really be going you're not going to be going anywhere so just to get your skin used to it I would suggest that you skip putting on any foundation but if you have to use foundation try and avoid using powders or very thick heavy foundations because the peeling is just going to look a lot worse and a great tip is that oils are amazing for your skin while you're using your vitamin A oils like squalene jojoba oil are really great things to introduce into your skincare routine while you are getting used to your vitamin A. Jojoba oil and squalene oil are also oils that won't stop your retinol from working if you're concerned about that. They just help with rebuilding your skin and strengthening your skin and also with the hydration of your skin. So that's what you want to have in your skincare routine. Look for products with really good moisturizing properties in the moisturizer as well as good oils that are not too heavy um, on your skin. Another important factor is that you cannot use vitamin A when you're breastfeeding as well as if you are pregnant. So if you are falling within those two categories, please do not use any form of vitamin A. So other great benefits that you can experience when your skin has adjusted to using retinol is that you'll get smoother skin, you'll get glowing skin, fewer visible lines, better skin tone and elasticity, which we mentioned, as well as more hydrated skin. The best way of using your vitamin A is after you've washed your face, applied your toner or whatever first steps that you do in your skincare routine, then you apply it during your serum stage of your skincare routine. Make sure your skin is also dry before applying the vitamin A. A general guidance is to use a vitamin A at night, but as technology improves and formulations improve, there are a lot more products that enable you to use vitamin A in the morning. But general rule of thumb is that a vitamin A should be used during your nighttime skincare routine. Okay, so the next question that you probably are wondering is, when do you start using a vitamin A? Is it too early to use a vitamin A? Um, when do you stop using a vitamin A? How often should you use a vitamin A? So from what I've researched is that if you're in your 20s, kind of use it twice uh, a week because you don't really need it that much if you're under 25. Um, so use a low dosage. Start off very slow, so once or twice a week um and then increase it as you get older if you're in your 30s i would suggest again to start off at, with a low percentage it doesn't matter how old you are start off with a low percentage to get your skin used to it and then um and use it three times a week 
um, and then from there you can gradually increase it as you like and then if you're in your 40s again start off with a low percentage but use it three, four times a week so kind of like if you're in your 20s once or twice a week 30s three times a week 40s four times a week 50s five times a week and so forth so yeah because um as you grow older you lose that collagen in your skin so that's what you want to um that's what you want help with so i would suggest that you know the older you are the more often you use it but again as you use it introduce it slowly guys so another thing to take note is that you might not see the effects of the vitamin a immediately or as soon as you want to and that might prompt you to use a stronger percentage of vitamin a i highly suggest you don't do that still stick to a low percentage get used to it use it for about a month or until the product is finished before you introduce a higher percentage so you want to do that first before you just think that it's not working and jump onto a higher percentage you will damage your skin barrier so don't do that <laughs> what we want to do is to improve our skin with the least amount of damage so the best way of doing that is low percentages get your skin used to it and then increase it as you go if you have used the wrong dosage and your skin is very mad at you and irritated what you need to do is stop <laughs> if you went on and used a very high percentage of vitamin a in, an, in a product and you've damaged your skin barrier and your skin and you've got no idea what to do do you switch straight away to a lower percentage or, or what so i would suggest that you don't do that i would suggest that you stop completely and then you start repairing your skin so what you want to do is concentrate on moisturizing your skin hydrating your skin and repairing your skin barrier and all you need are products that are targeted for yours to repair your skin barrier or to maintain your skin barrier so products with good fatty acid ingredients products with ceramides in it um stuff like hyaluronic acid um just to make sure that your skin is being repaired once your skin has repaired itself then you can start again that would be my advice if you have damaged your skin by using a very high or wrong dosage for your skin so i'm going to just give you guys a list of products that you can try a great retinol product that you can try is from numi stockholm this is their birch tech hybrid overnight serum slash cream so it has 0.5 percent retinol which is a good enough percentage to try especially if you've got darker skin tones or if you are starting or new into using retinol products all their formulations contain birch sap which is pretty much their superstar ingredient in all their products and the benefits of that is that it that means it's very enzyme rich which means it has skin strengthening properties in it so the benefits of this birch sap ingredient is that it helps the product penetrate deeper into the skin which makes it more adv advantageous compared to products with water in it. So besides the retinol at 0.5% and the birch sap at 55%, they have other great ingredients in the formulation, such as hyaluronic acid, as well as vitamin C and E. If you want to try this product, I'll leave the link down in my description box. If you want to try a retinol dehyde product, I would suggest that you try one from Medicaid. I'll list the recommendations in the description box. Okay, so that's the end of this video, guys. I hope you find it useful. Let me know if you have a better understanding of retinoids, aka vitamin A. If you're not on my Instagram, make sure that you come and join me there on my Instagram and let's chat. I'll see you guys in my next video where I break down another ingredient. Bye, guys.